AM 1060 WMEL. The views expressed on the following program are those of the hosts, callers, and guests, and are not necessarily those of WMEL staff, management, or advertisers. This is Joe Stucker, folks, your host for Focus on Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County, Incorporated. The purpose of our organization is to inform, educate, and connect seniors and those that care for seniors to the resources that are available to help them age with dignity. And, folks, I don't care what anybody says. There are a lot of resources in Broad County. There is a lot of misinformation. There are a lot of people out there to do things that they shouldn't be doing. And there are ways to do things better. And that's one of the things that Helping Seniors is trying very, very hard to do. Our phone number for Kay Kaiser, our information specialist at the office, is 473-7770. The sponsors for the first part of this show include Gentiva Home Healthcare, the Eye Institute, Solid Bite Dental Implant, represented by Dr. Lee Sheldon, who is my panelist today, Bill Johnson, Illinois Attorney, radio station WMEL 1060 AM. Notice that new number, and also greater power. This station has quadrupled the area of coverage, folks, and those of you that might want to aspire to be a sponsor and you want to promote your business, I'll give a commercial plug for this radio station because the signal is one of the best in Florida. And if you run a commercial on this station, it can be heard as far north as Jacksonville, as far south as West Palm, and over on the other side of Orlando. And that's why I like what uh, John Harper has done here, because he's made it possible for more people to hear about the programs that we conduct on this radio station, and I've been doing this for 16, 15 years, now going on 16. So let me finish my uh, my uh, sponsors. Wustoff Hospital System, Levin Home Care, Ren Care Medical Alert, Atlantic Shores Rehabilitation, and Ebony News Today, and soon the Spanish newspaper Adia, who wants our column, and it will be translated both into Spanish and English. And let me tell you one of the reasons why uh, I think it's important before Lee and I even talk about what we're going to talk about today. Um, I went over to uh, pick up a piece of art for the art auction. It's going to be held on... Uh, 17 October, or the Holy Name of Jesus Church, art, rugs, Indian jewelry, all kinds of stuff. Folks, it's going to be a fantastic auction. I know because I've been collecting those stuff, and it's going to be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. We have great food, great wine. But one of the artists that I was, going to, was talking to said that she has a very good friend that lives in a city south of here that really needs a medical alert system, but she just won't wear one. And she said she's a frightened for her. Her family's not with her. The woman is, as she used the word, obstinate, doesn't want help. But she says, Joe, I know she needs help. She asked me a question. I told her about rent care. She says, I find it really hard to believe that it can do what you're telling me it can do. I said, I assure you that this system, if she wears it, and let's say she wants to go to the door and she's concerned about who might be on the other side of the door at 9 o'clock at night. All she has to do is push the button on her alert. Her voice will be transformed over a phone line to a listening system in Illinois. And they will monitor that conversation the whole time. If she's someplace and she falls, it triggers a system at the headquarters that says she's fallen. There's also a package she can get where she can put the... All her medica- medications then they have a nurse fill the tray up once a month, lock it, and if she doesn't take her medication within 15 minutes of the prescribed time, it triggers an alert. It will go to you and it will go to the family and where they live in New York. I said, what could you want for $69 a month? $69 a month. Look at a piece of mine. But she, folks, she didn't know about that kind of a program. That's one of the reasons that I talked to so many people about the radio watching a television show, reading our columns. Information empowers you to do things. And that's why I hope, after you listen to what Dr. Sheldon and I are going to talk today, and the topic of our show today is little-known little dental facts. And uh, I didn't know that. 
That's I, I prepared for something totally different, Joe. No, he didn't. Either. Oh my yeah. goodness! I don't know what I'll do. Yeah, I, I know. What yeah, we've got a full hour together, and I don't know any little-known little facts. I know they're little-known facts, folks. Doctor Sheldon wrote one book called the Ultimate Mouth Manual, and he realized he did an inadequate job in the first book, and he decided. I'm kidding. He didn't say a word. He <laughs> smiled, but he did a second book, and he just. Just about double the size of yes, it. Yes, I did. Yeah. But I started reading that thing last night based on the questions that Lee said. A couple of things he wanted to talk about were, were cracked teeth, the importance of your bite. And I started thinking, gee, we don't talk about that kind of stuff that often. We talk about the cost of dentistry. We talk about the lack of insurance. We talk about what insurance does, what it doesn't do. We, we, we do all, a lot of complaining and griping well, sometimes, Lee, uh, we don't really think about the ultimate impact of the mouth on overall health. You're right. Now, can I do a shameless plug first? Because yes, I will. You can. So you mentioned that book. That book is available at no charge by calling our office at area code three two one two five nine 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 eight zero. That's three two one two five nine 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 eight zero. We have that book, the Ultimate Mouth Manual. Um, co-authored by Dr. Matthew Sheldon and Dr. Lee Sheldon, um, which should tell you just about anything you want to know about dentistry. We also have things that cover your health. And if you want the book, if you just want to download it right now, you can get it free off our website, which is drleesheldon.com. So either way, you can uh, see that, and uh, and I hope you'll get a lot out of it. And this is um, essentially a public service. People uh, go and have dental care done all the time, and sometimes they just don't understand what we're saying when we're talking to them. And I wrote this book, um, and I wrote it in my way, and then I gave it to two editors who were non-dentists to make sure that it really made sense before we finally went to press. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Well, you hit a key. The, the key to what Dr. Shell was talking about, folks, is that uh, he and his uh, son have put the uh, book together and in a language that you can understand it's not it's not a uh, it's not a compilation of uh, of terminology that uh, it's difficult to understand it's it's down to earth it, it it's it relates to different parts it makes relations to different parts of the body so that uh, you can get a better understanding of how you through bad eating practices are bad uh, exercise practices or, or almost anything bad that you do, how it can adversely affect not only your mouth, but your heart, your kidneys, uh, affects a, a – and, and, and Lee, we've talked so many times for over a 15-year period about diabetes, uh, soda or sodium, sugar, uh, nutrients, nutrition uh, – it's a subject that you can beat to death, but it's 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 a subject that you can't really understand enough of. That's true. That's true. Uh, let me give you a common thing, which I didn't even prepare you for today, um, and that is uh, the Cochrane Review. And the Cochrane Review is an upper-level group that reviews dental and primarily medical literature, not dental literature. And they essentially look at the studies, they compile the studies, they reconfigure them again in order to develop to develop new data or new information from the studies that have already been done. Well, the Cochrane Review decided to tackle fluoride. Yeah, fluoride. You know, you know fluoride. You hear about fluoride all the time. Talk about it is. fluoride treatments of the teeth. Fluoride treatments of the teeth. This actually had to do with fluoride and adding fluoride to the water supply. Okay. The Cochrane Review found that 97% of those studies were biased. How could it be biased? In, In other words, sense? the data itself was not pristine data looked at objectively. That essentially the reviewers um, or the, the reviewers who were looking at this data looked at what the authors presented, and the authors pre and what was presented was somewhat opinion rather than fact. Now, that happens in a certain percentage of, of studies. It does. I mean, anybody who's a reviewer, who, who or, I mean, who's an author, um, has certain preconceived notions of what the experiment is going to show when they get all done. And either they objectively report it or, you know, you can spin data. 
Well, when you're looking at fluoride and 97% of the data was sp- was spun, I think it should give us all pause as to what fluoride is really doing for us and perhaps against us. So um, this is a, a this is an important review. The Cochrane the Cochran reviewers is respected by everyone in all aspects of medicine, all aspects of uh, aspects of healthcare, and it really throws into uh, consideration with the value of fluoride and particularly the value of fluoridation for all of us. You know, when I was reading your book last night, I, I took the index and I started looking through the index and said, okay, I wonder what particular aspect of dentistry that Dr. Sheldon thinks is more important compared to other uh, aspects of dentistry. And you know what? Just based on what I was looking through your index, the the area I came with now, you had a topic in there called uh, health issues. Of course, that covers a great big thing. But when you got to, to a specific topic, do you know what area of your book has the largest largest mention throughout your book? I have no idea what. Bite. Really? Yes. I like bite. That. We've never really talked about it, bite in the air. No, we've referred we to haven't. it, but we've never but, had a topic. But I about started that. looking, and uh, there are so many references to what the bite does, and uh, an incorrect bite or a bite that doesn't let your teeth mesh right. Uh, can cause headaches. It can cause uh, so many things, and it, and it causes the tooth loosening. It causes cause. Uh, what was the other most important thing? Uh, um, I think it's. I would think it was, to me it, it led to something like tension. Uh, if the bite's not correct. It causes so much t- other t- tension in other parts of the body. Well, you, you, we talked about it in terms of, in reference to headaches. And of course, if you have if you have muscle strain in your head as a result of your teeth not meeting correctly, so therefore your jaws don't know where to go. Well, the muscle strain doesn't just stop in the head; it can go down the back because all muscles are connect ultimately connected to each other. So you've got head muscles which are connected to the neck muscles, which are connected to the back muscles. So yes. certainly, when we're talking about a problem. Uh, with bite, and if we're talking about the muscular tension in particular. Yeah, it can be translated, or it, it can it can result in, uh, in in uh, in 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 that particular tension traveling down to other parts of the body. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's make for 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 a minute. Let's make an assumption that the majority of the people listening to this radio show are senior citizens. Yep. And let's say if it is a given fact that the majority are seniors. Why is it still important for those of us in our 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s to still be concerned about proper care of the mouth? Why? Well, uh, do you want me to be humorous for a second? I want you to be <laughs> really serious. I nah, want, I want I've you. never been serious yeah. in my life. Um, yes, I have. Um, listen. As we get older, there are fewer and fewer things that we enjoy doing. Not that we wouldn't enjoy hitting a tennis ball, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to hit a tennis ball in our 90s. The one thing that we enjoy doing is chewing, eating, tasting our food. It's something we look forward to. We look forward to those meals. So just from that simple level, if you're thinking about chewing... How well do you get the enjoyment of of, of eating food? If you go to a restaurant and you're looking down the menu, not because you want to taste something new, but you're looking down the menu to see what's soft enough for you to chew, you know, how much enjoyment can there be? If you go and go to that restaurant and then you have to excuse yourself to the bathroom because everything is caught underneath your dentures, your partial dentures, Again, it's 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 a it's a different level of enjoyment of food when, in fact, you're thinking about everything you're eating and everything that's going into your mouth. Okay, so just I, from that level, that's a, that, that that's the visceral level. You okay. feel it. You you know you taste it. How many people do you think, Lee, in the seventies and eighties, were dentures today? Is there any kind of a statistic there, out on that? There is, I'm sure, and I and I used to know it. I don't. It's a, it's a substantial number. 
But it is a substantial yeah. number. Yeah. And for those people that don't have a denture problem, the significance of what you and I are talking about today probably doesn't weigh as heavily on them as it does the ones that if you're in a crowd and you start laughing or you have an explosive laugh and you have the likability that your lower dentures may pop out of your mouth, it's 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 a it's a frightening experience. Sure it is. Yeah. But that does that can happen. But but those of us that don't have that, I have implants, so I have a I have a partial, but it's, it's anchored by implants. So I, it's just like and you put it in. It's just like my own teeth. I've never had a problem with it. Yeah. And the yeah. key to that, by the way, Joe, is to make sure that those teeth are meeting the same way as your natural teeth are meeting. Well, I wanted to ask you a question about that because uh, my wife said, Joe, what are you doing with your mouth? And I find sometimes I find myself nibbling on the inside of my lower lip. Yeah. Why are you, is there a reason, a dental reason why I do that? Mm-mm. It's all you. It's all nerves? It's all you. It is? It is. Yeah, but a lot of people, reason. do you have people that you come into your practice that, that do that kind of thing? I did it. So how do you crack something I like finally that? made up my mind I was going to do it. I actually went through a certain mental processing thing as well, um, and I don't do it anymore. But there was a time when it was it's a nervous habit. I would go like this, and fair enough. Yeah. 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 And, I, and, and you can create swelling. You can, you can create um, small fibromas, which are benign tumors. You can do that just by chewing on your... Uh, on your cheeks and chewing on your lips and yeah. on the inside yeah. of your lips. And people do that. We see patients like that all the time. Well, Terry says, well, you look like a little old man when you do that, Joe. So and stop doing it, Joe. Of course, <laughs> I'm a big old man. It, it is I am an old man. But seriously speaking, yeah. we do things with our mouth or to our mouth, Lee, that, uh, that I think that the lack of understanding as to why we're doing what we are doing, our failure to act on... Uh, Making some, taking some preventive measures that that could cost us very little. Well, there are some preventive measures that 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 can really help. Uh, you know, of course, I'm a big implant guy, and so you know, we talk about implants as being the thing that's the best thing to do, and it is if you're missing teeth. But not everybody can have implants. One of the biggest things that I see on my patients who are wearing partial dentures. And we'll, we will t- talk about partial dentures. So that means some of the teeth are present, and then there's a partial denture that's clipped in over those teeth to replace the other missing okay. teeth. I can't tell you how often I find that when a patient bites down and his or her natural teeth are touching, in other words, you close fully so the natural teeth are touching and the partial dentures aren't. In other words, the partial dentures have worn so much that essentially they're just taking up space. You can't even chew on those partial dentures anymore. That can be easily fixed. How do you do that? Essentially what you do is, assuming the partial denture framework or the metal part of the of the denture fits, of the partial fits, you can go to the dentist. The dentist will make an impression. The old teeth can be taken out and new teeth can be put in by the laboratory. Be done in a very few days. And so now, and so now you can have the same denture, but new teeth in it, and the teeth will meet again. That can be great for chewing, and it's also great for taking the stress off of the natural teeth. Are you saying that people can take their regular dentures and have, have, if the teeth are worn in certain places, they can replace those teeth and then start 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 all over? Yes, they can. Do you do that? Yeah. I think that. There's a misunderstanding, Leah. There's, there's a misunderstanding a lot about what an orthodontist does, about what a periodontist does, and what general uh, dentists do. Um, I am finding when I look at my uh, my quote, what is called dental insurance, that I'm finding out that uh, some of the procedures that they say are covered are not nearly covered to the extent that they were 10 years ago. It's true. The whole thing has changed. It's true. Can, can, can you help our, our listening audience understand what, what, what dental insurance really is? What can it do? Uh, I'm also thinking I, was, I have a son that uh, his, uh, they, now, they live in Maryland, and he now has a doctor that he pays, I want to say, $1,500 a year 
a, a standard feed to that doctor, and that doctor answers all his questions. Yeah. If he's in another city, and has a problem, he can call that doctor. That doctor will contact the doctor in the city he's in and take care of the problem. Great. So we're seeing a shift in how medical procedures are handled. Is there any kind of thought given to that type of thing for dent, dent for dentistry care? Well. I think, you know, we've got to look, first of all, in, in, in two areas. We've got to look in the consultative or the diagnostic area of dentistry. And we've talked about this on the air even last month, that, in fact, the periodontist is charged with diagnosis of complex cases. So it's not unusual, then, if I'm doing the diagnosis and then saying, this is the treatment plan, we ought to do this, this, this in certain orders, that, in fact... That treatment plan is carried out in a certain order. And so when a patient has a question or has a problem, <laughs> it just happened to me this morning. A patient, is, a patient who I've never seen before is in Switzerland. He's going to be coming to Melbourne Beach in, in uh, November. And he's about to have a tooth taken out or he has an abscess tooth. He's in, he's in Switzerland. And he says, what should I do? Should I wait for you and have the tooth taken out now or... Should or have the tooth taken out when you arrive in November, I think it's October, or should I have the tooth taken out now? So I just went through that entire scenario. So he called the office, he talked with Jennifer. Jennifer said, Dr. Sheldon's right here, wanted to talk to him, we talked. And so I told him, of course, you've got an infection right now, you take the tooth out now and we'll 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 figure out what to do. And okay, we'll pick up on you. We'll finish it. We're gonna take a mid show break real quick, folks. Stay with us, I'll let Dr. Sheldon finish the story after the break. You remember what you had to say. Okay. Okay, stay with us, folks. AM 1060 WMEL. I'm Joe Stackler, founder and president of Helping Seniors of Brevard. Our mission is to provide seniors with resources and education so they may age with dignity. However, we need your help. Our first benefit auction is on October 17th at Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church with an incredible collection of unique items. Please call our office at 321-473-7770 to learn how you may purchase tickets or find out more. That's 473-7770. This is Joe Stucker, folks, your host for the second half of Helping Seniors, the radio arm of Helping Seniors at Broad County. Our job is to educate, inform, and connect seniors and those that care for seniors to resources that are available to them here in Broad County. And the second part of our show today is sponsored by Senior Scene Magazine, Hometown News, the Spanish newspaper Idea, Spotlight Magazine, Seniors Helping Seniors, the Fountains of Melbourne, Beth Courtney of the Braswell, Courtney Team, Financial Planners, uh, Canadian Medications, Wiedemann Malik, Vitas Hospice, and Peaceful Beach Mediation, which is a an attorney service which uh, helps senior citizens especially understand the wisdom of trying to talk through problems instead of getting a divorce when you're older. It's, it makes more sense to me. I'd like to think that I would like to keep my wife. And uh, Good idea. I like it. I like it, too, Lee. You, you should. You should like to keep Eleanor. She gets you out. In fact... Lee, uh, listen, one of the reasons that, that Lee should keep Elmer is because she runs his business. He, <laughs> he fills the teeth, but she runs the business. <laughs> She's in charge of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Elmer, that might be a good way for you to get an increase in pay. <laughs> she also works for very low wages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, knowing you, she probably does. Just probably enough to feed all the cats she takes care of. That's again. right. <laughs> Folks, you know, Lee and I have been doing this show for a number of years. I hope that you all enjoy us as much as we enjoy each other. And for a long time there, uh, we our paths couldn't get crossed where Lee could get to the station because of his business and things he had to do in Orlando. But uh, I enjoy having him at the radio station. I enjoy doing a show with him. We, we come up with some topics, and uh, sometimes we talk about the topics. But uh, hopefully uh, the show is Hopefully, we try to entertain you as well as educate and inform you. And I, I think that it's extremely important that people need do understand the importance of uh, better care of the mouth. And well, let's talk about these consultative effects, you know, th this whole consultation thing, because the patient in Switzerland obviously had enough confidence, and the power, power of the Internet essentially said – I was the person he was going to call. He was coming to Brevard County anyway, so so he he called. I think what he found, and what I hope you can find with your dentist, because people don't have concierge dentists like they do concierge physicians. 
And there's a difference because if you see a physician, for the most part, you're seeing the physician for diagnosis. That's what you do. Very few physicians do a lot of procedures. You spend more time talking with your physician, running the blood test, interpreting the blood test. It's that type of thing you're getting from the physician. As opposed to a dentist where most of the time you're going in there and you're doing something. You're getting a filling, you're getting a crown, you're getting periodontal treatment, you're getting an implant, you're getting this, you're getting that. that. And so... um, I've made a big effort nationally now, and our organization grew by two more this week, to make sure that people know that there is such a thing as a director of dental care, and that director of dental care could be found in any dental office with any dentist. But there are only certain dentists who are really attuned to looking at the entire mouth from a biologic standpoint. Everybody is is attuned to doing something, but they're but the periodontist is the more, more likely person to look at things from a biological standpoint because our entire profession is founded on biology, and so it's it, so when this patient called, and I'm glad he called me, and he could have gotten the same advice from from many other dentists, but he did call and he saw what we wrote and he saw what I do, and so it was very easy for him to call me. And or call our office, and Jennifer turned turned him right on to me. And I, I wasn't looking at treatment at that point. It's let's get rid of the infection. Let's get you some help, and we'll figure it out when when we get here. And I think you're you're going to find, particularly among periodontists, and you'll find in other professions as well, but certainly probably more likely with periodontists, you'll find this diagnostic thinking entity that you're thinking thinking about the case before you ever do something. And sometimes that requires a visit or two or three. I had a patient who came in just uh, last week and she came in the week before too. Um, there was a confusing problem that had where she'd seen a few dentists and finally landed in my office and we solved the confusion and then went to a root canal specialist and he and I conferred after hours to decide what was going to be done. And then finally, we've developed a treatment plan. Not not everything is you need a filling, that's it. There are things that you need to think about. You need to consider what's there. I actually was referring to an article that was written in the literature over 20 years ago that would help this person. So there are there is more than just the doing. There is the well, thinking. I'd like to important. ask you about that for just a second because I know that, and I, I, this is not something I'd plan to talk about today, but you said something that triggered it. We, we talk about the importance of diagnosis. Yeah. And we talk about the importance of not being reticent about asking for help. You have a program where a person can come into your office and say, I want an examination. And you will do a certain thing, say, for for a $50 donation that they make to a selected charity. And the money goes to the charity but you, you, what you do for that fifty dollars to help the people understand what they need. Lee? Patient gets all the X-rays that person needs, including a CT scan. They get a full examination with me, and they get a selection of treatment plans, all the way from the lower end, which might be the partial dentures, all the way up to the implants. So but, they know which choices they have, and they can select what's best for them. But a person can, can come in here and, and they get an examination. They get a CT scan. Mm-hmm. They do. Do you do the check with the thing? Check the, the below the teeth and all that kind of I stuff. I do the periodontal probing. We do all of the. You do all everything. That. Yeah. That's all included. So if a person comes in there, they can they can make a fifty dollar donation, which is deductible. Yep. And they find. Well, it. I'm not a tax advisor, so I won't say that. But they can make a fifty dollar do- donation. Yeah. But you give it to a charity. It yeah. helps the charity. That's right. Including helping helping seniors in yeah, Brevard County. We're one of them. Yes. And, yeah, and I'll admit that. Uh, but I think it's more important that a person can can come into an office and leave there with a pretty good understanding of what the condition of their mouth is and how it relates to their overall health, and more importantly, what they should be thinking about or what they could do. It might be something that you would do, or it could be something another dentist could do. That's it correct. might be something their own dentist could do, but he might not recognize what it is that – do you have that happen? It could be. Very often it's a second opinion from what, a second dentist is, from what the first dentist has already said. And sometimes I will agree and sometimes I won't, but that's the nature of the game. And uh, 
but the point is that uh, I'm very proud. I mean, you know, I'm proud to be working with my son, with Matthew, and and you've met Michelle Furtado, our board certified periodontist. And just this morning, Joe, and we do this every Thursday morning. We meet meet at seven o'clock for a case conference. Case conference essentially says we look at the complicated cases of the week and we discuss together how we would treat them. So again, diagnosis and treatment plan before treatment. Yep. I go back, Lee, to almost 25, 27, 28 years, and I was a captain in the Navy, and I was the head of the, uh, I forget exactly, we called it multiple, a multidisciplinary team at the Naval Home. I chaired it. I had doctor, dentist, the lead nurse, the lead social worker, the lead housekeeper, and a couple other people. We were on this committee. And we uh, we looked at cases that we may need to move from assisted living care to the uh, hospital element, or may work move them from assisted living back to the well care room. Yeah. But we we did that every other week. We we looked at ten, fifteen cases, and we discussed what what we thought these people needed to do. Uh, there's a, there's a really an advantage in uh, in having that kind of approach to the practice of medicine. I don't think generally doctors do that. Well, I, I, I certainly in the hospital setting, doctors do do that. Now, at least when I was when I was in the hospital, they did. And certainly, as part of our training as periodontists, every week we would have case conference. And essentially, we would present our cases and to be grilled by our professors and outside dentists who would come in outside periodontists to uh, to to check us as far as why we were doing something. And there are a number of different approaches can be taken to the same problem. We certainly had to be able to justify our approaches based on the literature in order to be able to do, th- do things well. And that's what happens in a residency, and particularly in a periodontal residency. Every week, you're presenting your cases and you're being checked by somebody else. Case conference we're doing in our office, um, same thing. I'm not grilling everybody because, you know, <laughs> we, we are, are essentially treating together and we're colleagues. But still, um, I do take the lead because I'm, obviously I'm the most experienced one there. But all of us are working together to talk about not only the successes, but also the problems and how we can take those problems and make them into successes. Okay. I've got four specific things I want to ask you before Uh-oh. the next show. He's looking at a piece of paper One, now, folks. I'm looking at a piece of paper that I wrote down. What is the importance of a bite relationship, and how can a bad bite affect your health, and how can a bad bite affect your overall health? Well, that's the rest of the show. So um, essentially, if uh, the first thing I want you to look at is – do your teeth meet? Yeah, you. I'm talking to you, the, the radio listener who's there, and if you're in your car, don't do what I'm about to tell you, but do it when you get home. What I want you to do is take a piece of cellophane, cut it into a narrow strip, let's say about a quarter of an inch wide and about three inches long. And what I then want you to do is take that piece of cellophane and put it between your upper and lower teeth one by one. And I want you to close down. And when you close down, see if you can tug that cellophane out. If the cellophane is stuck between your upper and lower tooth, then you know that set of teeth is meeting. And if you're able to easily uh, take it out of the mouth, you know those teeth are not meeting. You can do this with partial dentures. You can do this with full dentures. You can do this with natural teeth. Every tooth is supposed to be touching. Every single tooth is supposed to be touching. Now, there are certain jaw relationships which which don't allow that to happen. And maybe if you have one of those jaw relationships, then maybe your front teeth won't meet. But every back tooth should. And if it's not, that means that the teeth that are meeting are taking more stress than they were designed to. And if that's the case, then you could see your dentist to put that tooth that isn't touching back into occlusion. What does occlusion mean? It means teeth touching each other. So if teeth aren't touching, we should be going to our dentist in order to be able to make sure that they do touch. But if you got, if you put that piece of, do that at a uh, uh, sliding in and out test, yeah. and you find that you have three or four teeth that are taking more of the stress than they should, that can lead to a cracked tooth. It can lead to a cracked tooth. It can also lead to jaw problems, jaw muscle problems. It can also lead to loosening teeth. 
um, so that if you have a tooth that's uh, that that is hitting prematurely, and particularly if it already has lost some bone support due to periodontal disease, it can cause that tooth to to be to loose to be loose and and ultimately to come out. If a person goes in to get her teeth clean, does the dental tech ever do any kind of checks to check bite? Do they do that when they go in for a tooth cleaning? Later? Ordinarily not. Uh, ordinarily, okay. that's the dentist's job. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, the uh, dental hygienist can't be trained to do so, but it's not part of their general training. So if the if the dentist they're working with uh, happens to be um, ha- happens to be pushing bites and uh, goes over that diagnos- diagnosis uh, with with hygienist, the hygienist is more likely to check it. But primarily the uh, the hygienist is going to check for periodontal disease. They'll take that probe and go below the gum line and see, make sure that it's going three millimeters or less. Um, if it's going more than that, chances are you have periodontal disease. And then they'll make, be making sure that your teeth are clean both above the gum line and below the gum line. Could you make an educated guess as to how many people? We have roughly 330 million people in the United States. Of that 330 million people, how many million do you think? would even think about going and asking a dentist to check their bite or think they might have a problem other than if you've got a, a, a tooth that's hurting, you go and see the dentist. Yep. Or if you break a tooth, you go in and see the dentist. Uh, some of us go in and get our teeth cleaned. Some of us don't do it as often as we should. But how many people are, are or are there any statistics that show how many people just completely ignore Dental health care? Well, it's uh, 30% or greater in the United States that don't see a dentist they on ignore. a regular basis. Yeah. Does now, and there were some estimates as high as 50%. I'm not sure where it is now. Now, part, part of the, there are two reasons for that. Number one, they are ignoring their dental health. And number two, quite frankly, there's some people who just don't need dental care. That they do fine, you know, they, their systems are all working correctly in their mouths, and they really don't need need much. There aren't, there aren't, isn't a large a large percentage that's that way. But I see a number of patients um, every year that I say, well, good, thanks for coming. Um, they you want your teeth clean from a cosmetic perspective, you can, but you really don't need need to see me. But you know, I suspect that um, there are a large number of people in the United States that. Uh, simply don't need to see a doctor, don't need to see a dentist, don't need to see anybody. They're, they're fine. Yeah. But even having said that, I'm sure, that, and from what I was, my experience has been that all the dentists and doctors that I know are always busy. There's always seems to be enough business going around for for doctors and dentists. Am I am I offline here or not? I don't think, uh, I, I, I think you're going to find the better practitioners are always going to be busy. And those are the people you're seeing. And the people that are not as good may not be that busy, particularly when you're talking about elective health care. You know, don't forget, medicine is paid for by somebody else, and dentistry is paid out of your pocket. And so people are going to um, be a little bit more picky um, in terms of deciding what treatment they're going to have done and what treatment they're not going to have done. Um, and there are some dentists that, you know, frankly are struggling. So, um, I don't think, I think, I don't think the comparison is the same. Yeah. Well, folks, one of the reasons I asked Dr. Sheldon that question is because before the show, uh, I asked him a question about root canals. And I know there, I, I, I dare say many of you listening to us talk today have experienced or know somebody that has undergone a root canal. I've, I've looked at, uh, I've done a lot of research on the internet about, uh, um, insurance costs for root canals and for implants. I have found that uh, very, very few uh, insurance plans cover implants. I found that uh, there's a sort of a, a, a great misunderstanding about what a root canal is and 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 how how you should look at the cost of a root canal. And uh, I, I would ask Dr. Sheldon to explain a little bit more about uh, as we get older and a, and a different uh, channels, of lack of a better word, uh, that you just don't go into a tooth and drill out a root. There's a, there's a lot more to it, right? Dr. Yeah, well, we got to look at the root canal because we have many confusing terms in dentistry. The root canal and the root are two different things. The root is the thing that's hold, that, that holds the tooth in the bone, and through the uh, center of that root is a small channel 
that goes from the top of the tooth all the way down to the to the end of the tooth. That's where the canal is. And in that canal, there are blood vessels and nerves. That's why, you know, you hear the word, I hit a nerve. Well, there's very little nerve tissue in there, but there is some. So when you do a root canal, either that nerve has been affected and you have a toothache, or that nerve and 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 those blood vessels have gone dead and now they're filled with bacteria and they're producing an infection which potentially can go into your jaw so when a root canal is done the purpose of that is to clean out all of that dead nerve tissue or if it's a toothache that live nerve tissue so you don't feel the toothache anymore and then to fill the tooth from the root all the way up to the top of the tooth with a filling material and root canals can be quite effective but as as there's you explained to me that uh, one of the reasons that uh, root, root canals are more expensive is because it, there are so many different paths that that, 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 for lack of a better word, you just don't go drill one place and take a root out. That's right. There are different uh, numbers of canals depending upon what tooth you're looking at. A front tooth usually has only one canal, so it's a lot easier to do it. Number one, it's in the front. Number two, there's only one canal to be cleaned out. If you go to a molar tooth or one of the large chewing teeth, there are at least three canals in each of those teeth, and there's small, thready canals, and they are a little bit difficult to negotiate, and so that takes more time because and there's three canals rather than one. It costs more money to do it because there's more work to be done. Yeah, and I... And, 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 I've heard people say to me, "Well, Joe, I've had a root canal, but I'm still I'm still in pain." Yeah. And when I was reading the book, The Ultimate Mouth Man, I started getting a better get a handle on the fact that you have nerves that go around the outside of the tooth, down underneath the gum. That while you take the root out, you still get pain from these. What what are you what are, what are those things that go around the tooth? You've, you've got the peri, the periodontal ligament goes around the tooth, so that holds the tooth in place. And so that period and that periodontal ligament also has nerves within it, nerve fibers within it, so that if a person, for example, has a crack in the tooth. Even though the nerve has come out, the crack could be going right through the periodontal ligament, and you still feel pain when you bite down. Okay, last question. Uh, we have got time, but I want to ask this one question. Person get a tra- cracked tooth. Yeah. There are ways you could go in and you can put a crown on a cracked tooth, and sometimes that works. The whole, if it, it depends a lot where the tooth is cracked. That's exactly right. If it's okay. cracked towards the surface, a crown will work. If it's cracked well down into the root, a crown, uh, a, a, a crown likely won't work. So that's why it's important to go to a good dentist that can tell you what the problem really is yeah. and recommend a solution. Uh, I would say that you probably could go to somebody and say, okay, put a crown on it, when in fact it might be better to pull a tooth and think about an implant or think about some or other a bridge. method of restoration. Yeah, it is. And that's why where diagnosis comes in is so important. When, once you have treatment done, you don't want to have, to have to repeat that treatment. And while we're not 100%, certainly um, if we spend enough time on diagnosis, we can get very close to 100% to make the right decision the first time. So if a person thinks they have a cracked tooth, they got a pain, they can go to your office, ask for an examination, they got a full CT scan to get a check, find out if they got a cracked tooth or not, you can tell them what you could do, or they go to somebody else, and only cost them 50 bucks, and leave over with a greater peace of mind knowing they've done the right thing. Exactly right. That's How about that for a commercial? I love that. That's, That's great, it. Joe. Yeah. Anything else that we have? Uh, no, I think, uh, you know, over the past two months, we've talked about the importance of diagnosis, and we'll probably leave that point. You know, we're going to talk about bites today. We did hit it a little bit. Maybe we'll hit it a little bit uh, next month as well. But um, if I could say anything, don't be in as much of a hurry to do as you are to think. Make sure that things that you're doing in your mouth really make sense to you. Okay, and that, and by the way, do that in medicine too. Not because it's covered by insurance, but because it makes sense to you. If so, you're going to be a better chance to be in control of your dental treatment and and have a greater opportunity for success. So you can go to a dentist and get a, go in and get a good consultation. The same thing for law practice. You can go into good attorneys, get a free consultation, and walk out of there knowing at least the right thing you should do. That's right. That's right. Yep. Lee, thank you so much for being thank on the you, show Joe. today. I enjoyed having you. Always do. Always a pleasure. And thank you, listeners, for listening. And remember about the auction on 17 October over at Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church. You can call the office at 473-7770. And Kate can tell you to go on the site and take a look at some of the beautiful things we're having. See you next week.